good morning good afternoon and good evening everyone depending upon where you have joined from uh, welcome to another webinar from data platform geeks and today's our session is on implementing ai solutions using azure machine learning services and our speaker is vitor fava who is a data platform mvp from brazil my name is satya ramesh and i will be the host for you for the next one hour and arthi nambiar she is my colleague helping me with moderation of today's webinar so before we move forward a quick word about who we are and what we do edomna systems has couple of brands under it under which sql maestros uh, we do offer lot of advanced trainings on sql server and microsoft data platform and ai related technologies and uh, sql maestros also offers couple of self paced learning solutions called learning kits and hands on labs so sql maestros recently coming up with video courses you can uh, i'll talk about all these things a little later and people were india which is our corporate training unit and uh, we do not also have a famous erp product called expand sm erp today our concentration is on data platform geeks and sql server geeks communities which were founded by mvp and mcm amit bansal and uh, once in a year we do annual summit called data platform summit it is the picture of recently concluded data platform summit edition uh, where uh, more than 1000 people participated from 300 plus companies and people generally travel down from 20 plus countries and uh, there are more than 100 plus sessions delivered uh, for, by 50 plus speakers and speakers also do travel from 16 plus countries so if you are serious about your career and you are working with data analytics and ai related technologies this is a must attend for you and this is an annual event which happens in bangalore india so you can learn more about data platform summit using www.dps10.com the links are there in available uh, in chat window uh, here is a quick picture of uh, edomna teams and data platform geeks teams on uh, stage of data platform summit 2019 and here is a dpg team, founder and president amit bansal and uh, vice president manohar punna and you can also see a couple of other regional mentors as well in the screen uh, these are the edomna teams that will help us to organize these kind of uh, events and a special thanks to microsoft for helping us out in our community events uh, you're already part of Data Platform Geeks. If you're not part of uh, Data Platform Geeks already, please go ahead and register for uh, Data Platform Geeks. It's a free subscription. And if you become a, uh, if you become a, a member with Data Platform Geeks, you'll be able to attend uh, all of our free events, uh, webinars, and you can also access labs and other free videos and host of other learning resources as well. So uh, remain as a member with Data Platform Geeks and whitelist our Data Platform Geeks domain. So beyond this webinar, if you have any questions, uh, you can join our Facebook and LinkedIn groups, and we also have a group on Telegram. Uh, you can ask the questions at the end of the session using Q&A panel. And beyond this session, if you have any questions, you can ask uh, in this Facebook and LinkedIn groups on, or else in the Telegram channel as well. So as the re uh, recording, uh, this particular webinar is getting recorded, and we are going to upload this recording in youtube.com slash SQL Server Geeks channel. And we also have a couple of other uh, SQL Server related videos which we upload on sql maestro's youtube channel so these are the youtube channels the links are again available in chat window and we also have a, a community running on telegram so you can join the telegram community as well so with this i just hand it over to our uh, waiter waiter please take over hey hey guys uh oh thank you thank you for the introduction uh let me just share my screen so we can start guys let's do it let me just change here okay awesome put this here let me uh, let me know uh, if you if you have any problems or any issues uh, with my screen with my slides and I can help you okay guys so uh, first of all I want to say a thank you for uh, everyone uh, of you that is uh, joining the session today so for me it's a great pleasure uh, to bring you uh, this topic you know uh, it's really nice to talk about uh, artificial intelligence, uh, especially working with Azure uh, and Azure Machine Learning Service and Azure Machine Learning Studio. That is the tool that I'm going to use with you today, guys. So 
thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the invite. And if you have any questions, uh, please just put them on the, on, on the chat and uh, I will do my best to answer all of them. Okay. So uh, the idea today is to talk more about how to implement uh, data prediction use Azure Machine Learning, right? Azure Machine Learning Service. So first of all, uh, I have a, a small agenda for you, okay? I want, to, I want to tell you more, I want to talk to you more about what is artificial intelligence, what are the technologies that we, we have behind AI today, right? And how we can use AI. Right, and then I will show you a demo, uh, a demonstration using Azure Machine Learning Studio. But before we start that demo, uh, I, I just want to give you some information. Uh, I, I want to share something uh, with all of you about artificial intelligence and what is going on right now with everything that you heard about artificial intelligence. Right, so uh, a quick slide about myself. So my name is Vitor. Uh, I am from Brazil. Right. So again, thank you uh, all of you for having me today. I am a AI and that data platform MVP, right? Uh, I am also uh, the chapter leader uh, of a chapter group here in Brazil, a past chapter group here in Brazil that is uh, SQL Maniacs. If you uh, have interest in you can use the QR code to join us on the Telegram, okay? Uh, don't be shy, do it, okay? It's, it's free, you can uh, help us to learn more, you can share your experience, that's okay. Uh, you see that most of the messages are in Portuguese, but don't worry, you can post your message in English too, right? You can. Also, uh, help us to grow here in Brazil. You, you also have my email, uh, my YouTube channel. Sorry for that, I'm working on that, but my YouTube channel right now has only uh, Portuguese, Portuguese videos, sorry for that. And you also have my blog, okay? So please uh, uh, feel free to reach me uh, to talk about anything related to data, not only about artificial intelligence, but if you need help uh, with SQL Server or Azure SQL database or something related to data platform from Microsoft, please guys, don't worry. You can reach me anytime. I will do my best to help you, okay? So let's start, let's talk more about artificial intelligence. And I have a question for you guys. I'm pretty sure that when you uh, listen to someone talking about artificial intelligence, this is the first thing that you have in mind. Huh? Tell me the truth. I'm pretty sure that when someone says, hey, I'm working uh, with artificial intelligence, this is your expectation, right? This is my expectation, at least, maybe in the future, but this is what I always thought about artificial intelligence. But this is what we have right now. Okay? For sure, this is just a joke, I'm kidding. But what I want to say with those examples is that we are uh, growing fast on AI solutions, but we still have some uh, challenges on this field, okay? We, we still need to work more with some uh, algorithms, with the data, so it's not so simple to have this, right? We have this, and let me tell you, this is really cool. This is enough for you to start to to work with artificial intelligence, right? This is, this is uh, amazing. This is a great field to focus and I hope you enjoy, okay? So uh, let's talk more about artificial intelligence. Uh, do you know that the idea of artificial intelligence, the theory 
exists since 1956. 1950. Wow, this is like a mind explosion, right? Hey, Viru, really? The theory, the idea of artificial intelligence is from 1950, 1956, yeah, it's not new, guys, okay? So the idea of artificial intelligence is to build a mathematical model how our brain is working. And then put that on a machine. The idea is to help a machine to make some decisions like a human being. Okay? Hey, Peter, but if you have this uh, theory for so long, why just now we have something uh, that we can show to our clients? Why just now you can uh, build something new as artificial intelligence? This is because we have three pillars to build a good AI solution. And I, I will share uh, all of those with you guys right now, okay? The first thing that you need to think about when you are working with artificial intelligence, okay? It's data. Data. And I'm pretty sure that uh, the term big data is not new for all of you, right? Big data is not new at all, okay? And what is the idea about big data? The idea is to manipulate, is to work, is to process a large amount of raw data, right? Let me ask you guys and be honest with me. How many of you are using a, a like uh, a wearable, like uh, a, a iWatch, like Samsung Gear, or or how many of you are, are right now watching this session on your cell phone using uh, an internet on your cell phone? I'm pretty sure that some of you are doing that. I'm doing that every day, okay? For example, I have here uh, a Samsung gear and um, I'm using during all days to control uh, how, how is my heartbeat, uh, how, how is everything, how many steps I'm doing <laughs> by day, okay? I, I, I need to be honest, I need to, I need to exercise more, okay, guys? That's okay, but uh, the idea is that right now, at this moment, we have so much data and we are producing more and more and more data every day. But the first thing that we have right now that we didn't have in the past, it's access to large amounts of data. And let me, let me uh, explain this for you guys. Please don't worry about how difficult it is to work with artificial intelligence. And it's not difficult at all. I'll show you in a few minutes a great example using machine learning studio. But one thing that I, I need you to focus is that data is one of the most important things if you want to have a good model, a good data model to work with artificial intelligence. Okay? Uh, Hey, Peter, no, I, 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 don't under, I don't understand what are you trying to say. Let me, let me try to give you another example, guys. Uh, when you are a child, how do you learn things? How do you learn that, okay, I'm not able, I'm not supposed to uh, play with fire because it's dangerous, right? You try and you learn and you try and you learn. You have experience about something in your life, right? Okay? 
Right now, I, I'm 36 years old, so I have some experience about uh, uh, databases and IT topics and something like that. But how we can teach a machine to think if the machine doesn't have any experience at all? We need to uh, simulate that. And how we can do that with data, right? So if you have good data and a great, a large amount of data, I, I'm pretty sure that you were able to build, to develop a great data model. So data is one of the most important things for you to work with uh, artificial intelligence solutions, AI solutions. Okay, the second thing that we have right now and we didn't have in the past, processor power, right? Again, imagine that now you have a large amount of data. So you need to read that large amount of data. You need to process that large amount of data. So to process something, you need processor power, right? Okay. And I can, I can be honest, uh, depending on how much data you have, maybe you were not able to train an algorithm, a machine learning, right? On your own notebook, on your own uh, desktop, because you need a lot of processor power. Hey guys, but now we have that. How about cloud computing how about cloud computing guys okay um again i'm pretty sure that some of you are already working with azure or aws or cloud or google cloud uh doesn't matter what is your cloud provider the idea here is that now you have uh access to a huge amount of processor power and this is really easy to manage for sure you need to pay for that right if you want to use processor power power you can use it but you need to pay for that so, but now you can do that really really fast so okay let, let, let's remember that first thing data second thing processor power and the third thing that you need is good data models right you need to build a data model that is going to uh, sort, process, and analyze your data, okay? This is the idea, right? Let me show you one slide here that I think could help you to visualize better. This is what I'm talking about, guys. This is what I'm talking about, okay? So to build a great AI solution, you need Big data, you need processing power, and you need good data models. So those three pillars together, they help you to build a great AI solution, right? You get it? Awesome. It's not difficult, right? It's not difficult at all. Hey, Vier, but and how I can start to work with AI? Okay, now you understand why today you can build something related to AI because now you have big data, you have processor power and have good data models. Now you need to understand more about what are the technologies behind artificial intelligence, right? And the first one that we are going to talk is machine learning. In fact, this is the topic of our, our session today talk about how to implement machine learning, right? And I'm going to do a, a classification analysis with you guys using machine learning and using Azure Machine Learning Studio. But I want you to visualize that you don't have only machine learning to work. So AI is a huge area. It's like, I'll, I'll tell you, okay, uh, you want to work with, uh, SQL Server. Okay, but what do you want to do on SQL Server? You can uh, start to work, for example, 
uh, with high availability solutions, you could be a performance tuning guy, you could be a data analytics guy, you could be someone that is expert on Power BI solutions. See, you have a lot of things under SQL Server. So it's the same thing about AI. AI is a huge area and those three that I'm just sharing uh, uh, to you guys, they're the most important. And I, I, can, I can say to you that machine learning is the idea where you can build something and show something to your client. So uh, in my experience, I can say that this huge hype that is happening about AI, it's because machine learning solutions, okay? But inside machine learning, you also have some flavors that you can work. Let's discuss more about that in a few seconds. So you have machine learning, you have deep learning, you have natural language processing. Okay, our idea here is to focus on machine learning. Okay, but deep learning, you can use deep learning, for example, uh, to work with uh, videos, images, how it's possible for you to uh, process a video, for example, and find some uh, specific behavior, uh, identify someone in a video, so this is something that you can do using AI solutions and the area that you want to work, it's deep learning, okay? Natural language processing uh, is the idea to understand your language and do something with that. For example, I, I don't know if you are already using Cortana, if you're already using Alexa, if you're already using uh, Siri on your cell phone, if, if you are using uh, uh, on your Android the Google Assistant, but if you are, this is 100% AI. So this is related to natural language processing. Okay? See, you are already using AI and you do, don't even think about that anymore. Okay? Uh, hey, Vir, no, I'm not using AI. I don't have uh, none of those uh, assistants. That's, that's, that's no problem. How uh, many of you like to do shopping on Amazon.com, for example? I'm pretty sure that some of you are already buying something or already bought something on Amazon. Okay? And when you are buying something uh, on, on Amazon.com, it's common that you have some recommendations from Amazon, right? Hey, Peter, you are buying this book. Uh, so usually someone that's buying this book buys this one, this one too, or those other two books. This is like a recommendation, okay? Again, guy. Guys, this is AI. This is artificial intelligence working. How do you think that Amazon is able to suggest, to recommend something for you? Because they are doing some data analysis. Imagine how many, how many orders you have per day on Amazon. Ah, I'm not able to think about a number, okay? But if you have a large amount of data, like Amazon have, okay? Like Amazon has, imagine that you can analyze everything and you can discover some patterns there and say, hey, uh, I have a good thing here. Uh, if you're buying a book about Python, Oh, you can buy a book also about uh, statistics. Oh, this is a good thing. I'll, I, I think I'll buy that. Okay, so this is AI working. This is a machine learning working. 
So, talking about machine learning, guys, what's the idea about machine learning? Machine learning it has that idea to uh, understand your data and do some predictions. Okay? The idea is to have a computer uh, using some data, like we can call a, a training set, to learn more about and help you to take some decisions. As I told you guys, uh, in my opinion, machine learning is the main driver of artificial intelligence right now. It's because of machine learning solutions that we have this huge hype on AI. So working with machine learning, inside machine learning, we have uh, two ways of process and understand what's happening with your data. We have supervised learning and unsupervised learning, okay? My idea, is, my idea today is to focus only on supervised learning. And the idea on supervised learning is really, really easy to understand, guys. Uh, again, machine learning is uh, about read your data, learn more about your data, and then do some predictions. For example, uh, the demo that I want to show to you is like uh, a machine learning model that is going to predict or at least try to predict if a patient from a hospital could have diabetes or not, right? So based on uh, a large amount of data, an historical data with some examples that patients that have diabetes and patients that doesn't have that, that doesn't have diabetes, I'm able to learn and with new data, I'm able to help you to discover that, that if this patient has or have not Diabetes. Let me show you. I, I, I'll show you uh, an example of the data set that I'm going to use here. And I believe this is going to be easier for you to understand, guys. So let me put this here for you. Here. This is uh, a, the data set that I'm going to use. So the data set is uh, the data that I'm going to uh, read that I'm going to understand as a machine learning, right? Uh, inside my machine learning and then predict something. And the idea here is to use supervised learning. Why supervised learning? What, what the, the, it, does it mean, Peter? It means that you want to predict something based on uh, real information. For example, take a look here, guys. I have some information here about some patients. Uh, please don't worry about the meaning of all of this. Just pay attention here. I have some data about some patients like pregnancy, plasma glucose, uh, diastolic flash pressure. But the most important thing that I want you to see here, guys, is that column. Right? Let me put here is that column diabetic diabetic okay so this is a data set that I'm going to share with my machine learning my machine learning is going to read all of those attributes we call features right it's an attribute about something that we want to analyze so this is a feature okay so the idea here is to read all that data and then be able to analyze a new patient with the same features and say, okay, this patient has diabetes, diabetes or has not diabetes, okay? But you can take a look here on the last column. Hey, Peter, but 
I, I already know that this patient here uh, is a diabetic person, yeah? And I already know that this one here is not a diabetic person, yeah? You already know that. But if I show you something new, if I show you a new patient with those same information here, right? You are going to tell me, you are going to analyze and tell me, okay, this new patient has diabetes too or has not diabetes too. So I'm going to train my machine learning algorithm with some real data. The information is already here, guys. So this is the idea of supervised learning. I'm, 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 uh, I'm giving some data set to my machine learning model with the information that I want to predict. So I already have some examples of real values, of real data. It's the same thing, for example, if you want to predict uh, the price of an, an, a vehicle, an automobile, right? I can share with my machine learning some real data with some examples uh, of cars and the actual price of each one of them and some features that I would like to use to analyze that car. And when I test that with a new car, my machine learning model is able to analyze everything and say, hey, uh, based on my previous experience, hey, I'll take a look at that, huh? experience. Based on my pre previous experience, with the data that you gave to me, I think maybe it's possible that this is the best price for this car. This is good, right, guys? This is amazing, okay? This is really cool. So this is the idea, right? Supervised learning. Uh, on supervised learning, I have classification and I have regression, right? I have algorithms to work with classification and regression. Today, what I, uh, I, want, to, I want to do, guys, uh, with you is a classification model, okay? So what is uh, a classification? Now, the idea of classification is just uh, split objects based uh, on one attribute or more than one attribute and then split them. Right, for example, uh, spam filtering. I spam filtering is a machine learning solution. Yeah, it's an AI solution using machine learning. And inside this machine learning, uh, you have uh, analysis using a classification algorithm. So this may could be a span or could not be a span. It's like what we like to call a discrete value, okay? It is or it is not. Okay, so this is the idea of classification. It's the idea that I'm going to show to you on the diabetes analysis. Uh, you could have diabetes or not, okay? For example, uh, using a uh, decision tree, I could do an analysis to give you a low one. And I can do something like that on, on my machine learning. Take a look here, guys. This is really cool. What I could do, uh, I could check your credit history. You have a good credit history? Oh yeah, I have. Okay, but uh, you have a good credit history, but have you ha have a debt uh, greater than $1,000? No, okay. So you are good to have a loan. Oh yes, I have a, a debt. Uh, so no, you are not a able to have a loan. So if you have a bad credit history, I will need to be sure that you have something uh, to, uh, to use as a, a pledge, okay? You have a pledge? Have, have a pledge? Yes, I have. Have some uh, guarantors? Yes, I have. Okay, so that's cool. Uh, you can have a loan or no, you cannot have a loan. Okay, this is a classification. Yes or no? It's different when you are uh, working with regression, right? 
The idea is pretty much the same, but the results, they are different. For example, uh, to predict some stock price forecasts, to predict some sales on your a company. This is something that you need to do with regression. Okay, you are not just doing a classification. You want to predict some value. For example, uh, I have an example here. An algorithm that could predict traffic jams. Okay, this is a regression based on historical information. I can analyze that historical information. I can create a model and I can evaluate some data and say, okay, this is my prediction about the traffic jams. And you can use that based on your past information, right? Your previous information about uh, using your experience to predict some of your traffic jams. Okay, right? Uh, as a regression, you could use some uh, linear functions, you could use some polynomial functions. Uh, it depends uh, how complex is the analysis that you would like to do. Okay, cool, awesome. Okay, guys, so just give you some more examples about how you can use AI in daily lives. As I told you, applications such as Siri and Cortana, you already have uh, uh, voice processing. Facebook, Facebook use image recognition, right? You can uh, tag someone or you can tag yourself on some photos on Facebook, right? And as I told you, Amazon, for example, Amazon makes personalized recommendations based on your, uh, based on some experience with other clients. Okay, cool. So that's enough, right? I already, I already talked too much. Let me show you a demonstration, guys. Let me put this here, okay? Uh, so I, I already I already have a model here, and this model is already uh, trained and processed. Uh, I I already did that because we don't have a lot of time to spend here uh, away for this uh, machine learning solution to process. Okay, guys, but that's okay. I will explain, and I'll try to explain everything in detail for you. Okay. Uh, Please, if you have any questions, just let me know, okay? Don't be shy, you can talk to me. I really like to answer your questions. I really like to know if you are uh, understanding everything, if you are okay with all that information. I know that seems to be a lot of information, but it is not, okay guys, it's not. So uh, here I'm using machine learning on Azure, okay guys? Uh, let me just help you and I will do like that. Okay. If, he, if it's difficult for you to see, uh, just let go and I can zoom more, okay? Okay, guys? So, uh, again, you have a lot of technology that you can use to build a machine learning solution. Uh, for example, you can do uh, everything that I'm doing here, use Python, right? Python needs, I believe right now is the most common uh, programming language that you can use to work with uh, machine learning. And I, I need to, I need to uh, tell you, I need to say to you guys, it's really easy to learn, right? It's not difficult at all to learn about Python. You have a lot of free trainings on the internet that you can uh, you can try and and do that if you uh, if you want to work with machine learning work with AI or if you want to work with data science uh, please start working with Python because Python is really good yeah, you you have a lot of packages there that you can use like 
uh, NumPy and Pandas and Matplotlib, some of those that you can use to work with data analysis, okay? So my idea here today, guys, guys is to build a model, use Azure Machine Learning Studio. Okay, Azure Machine Learning Studio is uh, a service that you can use on Azure and you can build your model here. Okay, so let's take a look what I'm doing here, guys. Uh, I'm using, as I told you guys, I'm using this data set. That is a data set, an example data set, right? I just downloaded this data set. Uh, it's free. You can find a lot of data sets on the internet too. So I'm going to use this as a data set to train my, uh, my machine learning model and use that to predict if someone has diabetes. So the first thing that we have is two data sets here. I have a data set that is diabetes CSV and I have another data set that is doctor CSV, okay? Right? And I can take a look on this data. One of the, uh, one of the tasks that you need to do when you are working with data analysis, as you can understand, is do some data analysis. So I just uploaded the information and then I can right click here and take a look on my data set and I can take a look and visualize my data set here okay so here I have a lot of information and then I need to start to take a look on this information for example one thing that you need to pay attention guys I have uh, some information here uh, for example that is plasma glucose Take a look on those numbers. And then I have other information here that they are really small, right? Like diabetes pedigree, like BMI. So first thing that you need to do is to work with that data and start to normalize everything, right? Uh, it's not good, it's not recommended to train a machine learning model with data that is so different on, on, the, on, on the value, right? Okay, so I'll, 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 I'll show you how to do that. But take a look here. Another thing that it's important when you are doing some data analysis. Here on pregnancies, I can take a look on the histogram and you can see that I have some outliers here, right? See? you have a huge spike here. Again, this is not good when you are working on a data analysis. Yes, this could be used by our machine learning to identify a pattern that is not a good pattern. Okay, so another step that you need to do with your data is to analyze and try to solve these outliers. Uh, I also have another here, if you take a look, okay, on our uh, serum and insulin. Again, on BMI, I also have here, and on age, wow, on age, it's, it's huge. I have a huge here, see? So I need to, I need to work with that. I need to have a, a distribution that is something like that, guys. So what we call a normal distribution. See, this is okay. This is a good data to analyze. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is to upload our data, data set. So I have a uh, diabetes and I have here another data set with some doctors, just to show you. Here I have a patient ID and the doctor, right? A patient ID and the doctor, because here on my diabetes, I have the patient ID, see? So again, let's start, whoops, sorry, let's start and work with data. 
I already have my data set uploaded, so I'm going to join those two CSV files. That's okay. Amazing. After I do that, if you take a look on my data set, let's take a look here. You can see that now I have two more columns here. That is the patient ID again and the physician, right? This is the result of my join task. And then I am going to start to work and normalize my data. The first thing that I'm going to do, guys, is to work with my age column. And then I'm using a, a math function here, right, to work, a logarithmical fu function to work and uh, normalize the age column. Remember the age column? Take a look here again, guys. Let me show to you. This is the values that I have on my age column here. See? So I'm going to work with that data, normalize that data. So after I use this uh, uh, LN function, I'm going to show you what is the result and then when you take a look here right i don't have any more this information 21 23 23 i have the same information but it's now in our format and it's okay, it's not 100% good. You can say, hey, Peter, you still have this outlier, but take a look, guys, that is better than this one, right? It's better than this one, okay? I have a better distribution right now, and the information is good too, okay? So after work on age, I need to work on the other, uh, features like plasma glucose, diastolic, blood pressure, and I'm doing that here, guys. I'm using other two normalized data tasks to work with that, okay? And I'm using some method, methods here. Uh, I know we don't have time to discuss all of those methods. What is the difference between Z-score and what's the difference between mean and max? So don't worry about that. Uh, you have my mail and you can reach me and we can talk about that. We can discuss, discuss more about that anytime you want. So what I w want you to understand is that I'm, I'm working with my data. I'm manipulating my data. I'm transforming my data in a way that I have the same pattern between my columns. Okay. So here, if you take a look, I'm working with plasma glucose, diastolic blood pressure, triceps thickness, and ceramine BMI. After these, if you take a look on my data set, here guys, take a look. Now I have the information. It's pretty much the same uh, format, right? Take a look here, okay? Take a look here. Plasma glucose, 1.9. Diastolic blood pressure, uh, 0 0.5. There was a difference between those, right? Now they are almost at the same size. And I'm, I'm doing that with all my columns. Here I have another one that is pregnancy, diabetes pedigree age, and LN age. If we take a look on this one, Let's take a look on this. And again, take a look. Pregnancy, now it's on the same format. 0 0.5, 0 0.6, right? Take a look here. And it's cool, right? See? Everything is at the same size. So now it's good to have this data as a training data. And this is what I'm going to do right now, guys. Here, I have a split data. 
And what, what the idea here, guys, when you are working with a machine learning solution uh, in a supervised learning, you have your data set. So the idea here is to use 70% of this data set as a training set to train our machine learning and other 30% as our test data, okay? Okay, guys, again, it's really important. Uh, hey, Peter, why I, uh, I, I'm not able, I cannot use 100% uh, of my data to train my machine learning solution? Uh, because if, you're, if you do that, it's possible that you have a behavior uh, on your machine learning where the machine learning uh, is, aware of, is aware about all your examples and it's just overfitting everything. When you input some new data, it's when you test your uh, machine learning solution on your data set, that's your test data set, it's great, but that could be an overfitting pattern, okay? So I want to use Seventy percent is the are in the other thirty percent. Okay, guys, take a look here. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Here, I'm using seventy percent to train, and then I'm going to use other thirty percent here to test my model. Here, guys, I'm using two algorithms. To, to work with a classification solution. I'm using uh, a logistic, logistic regression and I'm using a boosted decision, okay? Okay, guys, boosted decision three is the same idea uh, about that uh, low one uh, example that I, 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 I gave to you. So the idea here, guys, guys is it's that I'm going to train my model see i'm training i'm training using two possible solutions two possible algorithms and after i train that what i'm going to do is to test that let me show you this is the result of my test and what i want what i would like to show it to you guys it is this one here right this column here, this diabetic column here, is the real information, okay? It's the real information that you have on your data set. And this one here, this scored labels, is the predicted column, right? So this is the real one, and this is the prediction. And take a look, okay, uh, these patients has diabetes okay and my machine learning model uh predicts that okay this guy's possible that this guy has some possible diabetes okay cool oh this is amazing yeah but you can take a look here on this example guys on our real data this patient has diabetes and my model just said, okay, this patient doesn't have diabetes. Hey, Peter, but this is not right. Yeah, it's not right, okay? So why this is happening? Guys, this is happening uh, mostly because I don't have enough data to have a great prediction. As I told you, when we begin to talk about machine learning and artificial intelligence solutions, uh, the most important thing that you need to have a great prediction model is data. If you have a good amount of data, if your data is uh, uh, it's good about a uh, quantity and quality, you are going to have a great prediction model. Okay, so this is what I would like to share to you, but I, I would, would like to give and show you something that is really cool, right? So guys, here I have 
two tasks. I'm using logistic regression and I'm testing use decision tree, right? So here I sh I sh uh, I'm showing to you the results using logistic regression. And here I have the same thing uh, using our decision tree, right? But uh, I, 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 I would like to show you this comparison uh, in another way, right? Using this here, that is the evaluation model. And if I take a look here, evaluate results, I have, this is a classification model, okay guys? So I have a, a ROC graph, a, a ROC chart, and this is really cool. And with this chart, it's really easy to see what is the best algorithm to work on my classification model. Take a look here. I have like a curve here, right? And on a classification model, the best model is the one that is pretty close to one. So this blue one is really far. See, this is uh, the results of our logistic regression. Okay, and this one, it's really good. See, it's almost one. It's our result. It's, it's cool, right? It's really cool. And it's on matrix, but I, what I would like you to take a look is that one, that is a precision, right? On this example, the precision is a great measure for us to see if we have a good uh, data model or not. So take a look here. Uh, the red one, that is the one that I'm using right now, has a precision of 0 0.9. And the blue one has a precision of 0 0.7. See? So the best solution for this example is to use the boosted decision tree. Hey, Vera, how you can find that, how it's possible for me to discover? Again, guys, remember when I told you about your child that you try and learn. You try again and learn more. You try again and learn more. It's the same thing here. You need to understand your data. Let me come back here to our presentation, guys. You need to understand your data and you need to test. You need to use some algorithms and see what fits best on your uh, scenario. Okay, cool. Guys, uh, this is what I would like to discuss with you today. I just want to say again, thank you for the invite. I hope you like the session. Uh, so if you have any questions, please send me an email. Uh, you can talk to me anytime you want. happy to be here really happy to share what I know what I'm learning and this is a message that I always like to share in my session okay you are the master of your career if you want to work with AI you can do it you just need to focus and then just need to study about it okay nothing is impossible if you really want to do it so I want to say uh, thank you again, and then I want to say uh, uh, congrats for all of you that are here, uh, and for you that is watching this recording uh, session, please continue doing that. This is the way that you are going to learn and be the best professional okay, possible, and I'm pretty sure that you are going to find, you are going to have an amazing job. Okay, so guys, thank you again. I hope, hope you like it. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. And thank you. I know that it is uh, afternoon for you guys. So uh, have a great afternoon.
And again, thank you for this chance. Thank you for the opportunity to be here with you. So thank you guys. Thank you for attending this webinar. Uh, if you have uh, any questions beyond this webinar, you can join these Facebook and LinkedIn groups. And we also have a Telegram channel on mobile as well. Uh, as I told you, I'll talk more about uh, video courses. So we have SQL Maestros is coming up with SQL Server Performance Tuning and T-SQL Querying and Programming Video Courses. And these are advanced and deep level uh, expert level modules going, are going to cover in this particular video course. And these video courses are getting constantly updated. And the main advantage of uh, subscribing to these video courses are watch anytime, anywhere, and as many times as you can. So if you want to learn more about performance tuning video course and T-SQL querying video course, you can visit sqlmaestros.com or else you can simply drop an email to contact at sqlmaestros.com. Again, uh, SQL Maestros also offers self-paced learning solution called uh, Hands-On Labs, uh, where you are provided with a lab document which has step-by-step -step instructions supported with uh, screenshots, explanations, and observations. And uh, at the end of the lab, you will be able to become an expert in that particular topic. So it's a self-paced learning. There are more than 200, uh, 100 plus labs available. Uh, if you wish to learn more about hands-on labs product, you can visit sqlmaestros.com or, or else you can directly go to this particular link as well. Thank you guys. Thank you for attending this webinar. Uh, please provide your feedback. The link is there available in the chat window or else you'll get an email also uh, with this uh, LinkedIn link. You can go ahead and post your comments and feedback there. Thank you guys. Thank you for joining. Uh, on Twitter, uh, please take over and uh, answer the Q&A. There are a couple of questions in Q&A panel. Oh, awesome. Uh, let me take a look here. Let me check, guys. Okay, I can see one question here, but if you have any anything else, so uh, I have a question uh, that is okay. Compared to Google Cloud Platform and AWS ML solutions, how much Azure ML solution is popular among developers? Wow, this is a great question. Uh, yeah. I believe Azure uh, is not so popular uh, if you do a comparison between uh, Google Cloud, for example, uh, but I need to say Microsoft is always an right now you have a lot of Azure uh, uh, AI services and and what is really interesting, what is really cool is that, for example, on Azure Machine Learning Studio uh, that I, we just discussed, you can develop some code, use Python. You have some integration with Python, okay? But I, I would like to use this question to say to you guys, if you would like to work with machine learning and an AI solution, please take a look for sure on what's going on with Google Cloud, right? AWS and also IBM, okay? Uh, my idea here is not to uh, give you just one possibility uh, to work with AI. Uh, I would like to share Azure because I think Azure Machine Learning Studio is, is easier to use, but my suggestion and my recommendation for you guys is that if you want, if you want to work if you want to be a machine learning engineer, uh, you need to take a look on all the players uh, in the market right now. And for sure, at least Google is something that you need to take a look. It's something that you must take a look and understand, understand better what is happening on that. Okay? Uh, okay, let's see. I believe... I am able to ju just it's just these questions, guys. If you have any other question, just uh, let me know. Uh, but if you were okay and have questions later, just send me an email. That's okay. There's no problem at all. I would be more than happy to talk to you again, guys, and help you on your journey uh, on the AI world. Thank you, Victor. Thank you very much for your time.